Hey y'all, um, it's Julie from Maui, and I thought I would make a video tonight about things that are on my mind for having um, some ideas on how to use COVID to become more healthy and more happy and more interconnected and more spiritually awake. Um, a treatment plan. I'm going to start using Facebook to just give little snippets of treatment plans. So tonight, the top three things that we can do, whether we have a COVID virus or not, we could um, firstly recognize that an outer sickness is also a reflection of an inner sickness. Okay, so there's always outer and inner and reflections and um, so when we think of an outer sickness of not being able to breathe or this invisible sickness that's going to come into us, that's going to keep us from breathing, what I feel like an antidote to that is to up the ante or turn the volume up, so to speak, on gratitude and empathy around the topic of breathing. So we can do breathing exercises for those of us who maybe are already having asthma or COPD. Maybe we have COVID. Maybe we're very healthy, but maybe we're former smokers. Who knows? All these different um, breathing levels of humans of how much we suffer around breathing. And breathing is such an innate, natural conduit for actually divine bliss so if we can use the act of breathing even more consciously meaning we go outside hopefully the air is purer i'm sure it is it's cleaner than it was so the healing of covid is around for me the pure network purifying ourselves purifying our air purifying our politics purifying is the theme so with that being said, um, breathing in and consciously thinking about the purity that you're breathing in, allowing it to breathe inside your lungs and, and pull out like trees do, anything that is not um, conducive, anything that is toxic to just to let it go and let it dissolve out. Holding that, also thinking about how everything wants to breathe. Nothing wants to be choked and suffocated. The masks that we're all having to wear are giving us PTSD symptoms and memories and, and feelings of empathy that being having something that makes it difficult to breathe, claustrophobic, um, those, uh, those sensations should turn us on to how much after lockdown is over how much we are going to commit ourselves to only allowing the businesses that are certified purifying helpful businesses to move forward onto our planet we as humans who all want to breathe now we can use this exercise to connect in with mother earth who also wants to breathe she is a living entity breathing it's she's alive and everything alive you want it to breathe and where we've disforest deforestation and made all this pollution and just treated her like dirt literally and then scooped up all her iron and turned it into weapons and then use it on each other to make bloodshed and fires and bombs i mean we really need to use this COVID time to breathe in our sanity and breathe out the past that we have literally come from the bloody trenches of hell in humanity onto each other through, through lifetimes. And now is the lifetime, now is the time, not just the lifetime, the time now is for humans gathered together and get it right. So the pure land or the pure network or the pure political party or the pure um, social network party, whatever we want to call it, the pure antidote for COVID, um, that's the theme for our cure. So 
keep doing everything we're doing, but we bring more consciousness into what we're doing. Mindfulness plus medicine in our mind, connecting to A, the act of breathing. That's the first step. Make it more conscious. Make it deeper in your empathy. Make it deeper in your responsibility. And then politically, take the responsibility to do your due diligence and find companies that have um, that are toxic to the air and and make a list say oh these are the companies that I don't want to do business with and we all start collecting these names of companies whose business is not going to go forward past this lockdown and whose businesses are and going to become even better and more refined and more helpful to the planet and each other so this lockdown is a time for humans to gather on our ground of ethical uh, empathy and sanity of business that we're going to participate in moving forward into our 21st century, 2020. So that's one antidote, the breathing, and then also making it a political antidote by identifying businesses that are um, conduce not conducive to healthy breathing. And that would include anything that is suffocating the life force. And specifically, I'm calling your attention to the Chinese Communist Dictatorship government of the CCP that is literally suppressing the light, suppressing the life of countless activities of, of damming up water and torturing and kidnapping people from any country now. They think they're so strong they can kidnap and hold prisoner on crazy law. You know, two Canadian journalists, 500 days as of today, they've been in Chinese prison. And what does the world do? What does the world do when China just takes Tibetan kids, a Panchen Lama, and his whole family, they just disappear for 25 years, and what do we do? Well, now it's time to do something. We care, and we're aware, and we do not allow those kind of qualities of activity to move past our lockdown. We make a list. We understand what the power and the potential is for darkness to move forward after lockdown. But we need to really conceive of, visualize, hold, empower, and think about how pure activity is going to come out of this. How we're going to breathe even more deep and more close and more connected. See, I am a Tantra teacher, so everything is about uniting with your pure nature and embodying the elements and harmonious balance and moving through this form world. And that's what we're here to do. We're not here to lock and chain and punish and avenge each other eternally. We're here to abandon that lowest level of violence. So a pure nature, a non-violent platform, a health and wellness platform for friends of nations, for we the people, for the White House. Um, that's the political antidote for COVID. We, we don't just lock ourselves down, not change, and put the authorities with the guns, the ones in charge of what we're doing and when we can do it. See, they can still be in the network of connecting and passing down the guidelines, but the boss on top of the armed forces is going to be a nonviolent boss, boss from now on in America. So nonviolent to the troops is going to be, the troops are not going to be wearing arms anymore. They're still going to be giving guidelines but they are not going to be armed and they're not going to have permission to shoot you. And if you yourself have a gun and you feel the urge to shoot, we would encourage you to come to your computer and talk about it. And, you know, we come get the gun and transform the weapon into a lot of healthy activity, kind of base camp for, for the training of a new training, a new age training for man to protect and serve. Whether he's serving in China or Hong Kong or Vietnam or United States or France, it doesn't matter. Men are men. Weapons are weapons, and it's time to graduate out of the weapons in the name of health care. If you really want to be healthy, then that's, that, that's common sense. But until it's common sense and until it's common law, we have a lot of work to do. That's why we can do that on an inner level by expanding what we're thinking what we're feeling to include not only ourselves but other and earth so when you breathe you're not just thinking about your two lungs you're thinking about the lungs of the planet and you're thinking about the lungs of your neighbor whether they have sickness or not 
and you're being gratitude and you're, you're pledging a vow to take care of the earth from here on out, to take care of the air from here on out. And that will help us start breathing better. Then we'll start doing better. Suppressing sickness is a daily activity. Increasing fear and authoritarian power is also a daily activity. You know, when you think about watching the activity of the military or China, it makes you not happy. It's really sucking the happiness out of us. And, and I say we need to pay attention to it so that we don't let it continue. But uh, the fact that it's real makes us feel less happy. So we need to turn the volume up on our happy feelings inside because happy feelings can um, they have more life force and they have more immunity. So, you know, you could take this healing idea not with only your breath, but with drinking water. You could think about pure going in, pure intentions, identifying companies that are aligning with pure intentions to empower. And also, I would say, like, do a little happy dance after you have your water. Even if you don't feel happy, even if you don't feel like doing a happy dance, that's stupid, you know? I'm 70 years old, I'm not gonna do a happy dance. Or I'm, I'm too cool, you know, I'm, I'm 30, or I'm 60, or whatever. I, I don't show happiness, I'm just mellow, I'm, you know. Do a happy dance! Do a happy dance. Move some happiness through our bodies and through our minds. Do a happy dance and put it on the TV. But little, little burst of light and love is our antidote, so. And then collectively, big burst of light and big burst of love are our antidote. But one step at a time, let's focus on us. We the little people behind the screen. I'd like to coach you into a little bit more better every day. A little bit more healthy, a little bit more responsible, a little bit more aware, a little bit more empowered. Empowered by not closing our eyes to the negativity business that we've been doing. Not closing our eyes to it, but seeing it and then responsibly saying, and now we're not going to do those businesses anymore. We're not going to do it the same way. We're different. We're breathing different. We're more empathetic. We're more compassionate. We're more awake. We're more empowered. Uh, these are just little ideas of organizing around true quality of care, ethical background checks on companies, and making a list of companies that are toxic. If you work for one of the toxic companies and you're on lockdown, which maybe you're not on lockdown because many of the toxic companies are still working. And some of the toxic company I'm talking about pretty much, you guys, don't make me say it, but it has to do with armed force. Okay? So don't be the violent controller use the armed forces in a positive way to be um, doing beneficial activity. See that as a global activity, healing, antidote for the political virus that we got going, and the world war virus that we got going, because this could be just a ruse. Ooh, y'all don't want to get the flu, and some of y'all don't want to want to die. But meanwhile, over here, this entire global darkness of power of lawless, violent suppression has moved into and 5G surveillance you and controlling you and you do whatever it says, including get this vaccine, including have that little vaccine, have a little tracer, including you get permission to do this, you get permission to do that, your little bots. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. <laughs>